So Vince, yes, we got. We're going to do a little baby. bit of football one hundred and one, right? So we, we got we, it today on our football one hundred and one. We're going to talk about gaps in line alignments, line numbering. Yes. So that, okay. So it, this is important uh, because when and I remember when I first became a football coach. Um, you know, there's a lot of jargon. There's a lot of terminology, right? And there's a lot of guys out there, you know, that think that they know all the jargon and the terminology that are in our profession, right, Brian? So uh, it's important because we talk about, when we're talking about recruiting, for example, we talk about, well, you know, this kid will be a great three technique. This kid will be a great one technique or even a zero, you know, that kind of a thing. What the heck does that even mean? That's mm -hmm. why we wanted to do this one. And this may be common knowledge to some people, but this is going to be enlightening to other people. Um, I remember when the light bulb went off when I was in high school, when the coaches actually explained what the gaps were, I was like, so that's what you meant. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's why we decided to do it. And it, again, this is a very simple football 101, but I think it is also a very important football 101. So go ahead, Brian. I'll let you take it from here. So this is a, a game from Pitt, Notre Dame Pitt. Okay. And we're just going to do it real quickly. So number one, the space between the guard and the center to both sides is called the A gap. Okay, the guard between the 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 guard between the center the the space between the guard and tackle is called a B gap. All right, and we'll explain why these matter. If there is a tight end, the space between the tackle and the tight end is a C gap, or actually the gap outside of the tackle is also a C gap. So you have a C gap on both sides. Here's where you get a little bit different. If there's a tight end, there can then be a D gap. Okay, and now that matters because if you tell a running back that we're going to run to the C gap on the boundary side, that would be, remember, boundary. Okay, here's the hash. Remember from last football 101, this is the boundary. <laughs> this is the field. Okay, so if you say, hey, we're, we're running a boundary run and you need to attack the C gap because you want this ball to get outside, okay, it's going to look a whole lot different than if you say we're trying to get to the C gap on the field side because <laughs> the field gap to the C side uh, – the to the field side, the C gap to the field side is going to be in between tackle and tight end. Now it would be the D gap that you'd want to get outside. So those that's why those things are important. Okay. Now here's a couple other reasons, Vince, and chime in anytime you want to. So here's why these num these letters and such, here's how they can be utilized. Okay. Number one, from a defensive standpoint, you have gap responsibilities. Okay. Yes. So for example, this linebacker right here, based on a certain call, you may say, hey, look, your job is you have B-gap, strong side, right? If it's run to you, you have A-gap away if it's a run away from you, or uh, A-gap backside. So if it's a run here, so let's say Notre Dame just runs straight downhill, right? Little counter. He's got his response to B-gap. So he's got to know I got to protect that gap because – this guy's doing C gap. This guy's got the A gap. And then some kind of safety is going to come down here for run support. So if he goes into the A gap, then there's nobody in the B gap and that play is going to be gone. Or if he goes A gap and then he goes B gap and then now nobody has C gap, right? So number one, it is that is you look at it that way. Well, then if it's, if it's run away, he knows he has, for example, okay, your fit is you have a week. Well, if Notre Dame's running outside zone here, he knows he has to have the A-gap weak. Well, here's the A-gap strong. Here's the A-gap weak. So he's going to you know, say he slants there. He's got to know he's got to protect that. It's essentially you're the cutback. What you can't do if you're that linebacker is you can't start flowing across, and all of a sudden this guy gets eaten up, and they get washed down, and then you overflow, and now all of a sudden Notre Dame is cutting right back into that A-gap because Notre Dame's linemen are going to be working side to the sides. Does that make sense? So you, or it could be, Hey, we're going to be here. And then you're fitting over top. If it's a stunt, right? If it's a blitz, okay. On this particular blitz, you're the linebacker. We're going to run a stunt where he's going to go a week and you're going to go a minus. So the way that we would describe it, if when we were breaking it down is if we're breaking down as an offensive coach, we're breaking down a defensive blitz, you know, so let's say this is the mic. We would go M minus a. Okay. That meant that this guy was going a gap weak, right? Or we would say M plus A if he was gonna, we'd go M plus A. So we know the mic is blitzing the A gap to the strong side as we define the strong side. Okay. So that's how you kind of figure out what they're gonna be. And then, of course, so you're identifying that offensively 
And then they're also identifying that uh, defensively. Okay. The other thing is, is, is this isn't as specific, but you have certain runs that you want to hit certain spots. Now zone runs don't really have gaps. Okay. As far as where the back is going, where where zone, where zone runs have gaps responsibility is with the line. So the communication is, so if you're, if this is what we talked about last week is there's uncovered and uncovered rules. So this guard right here, Aaron Banks, he's uncovered. He doesn't have anyone lined up on him either side. Jared Patterson is covered. So they, if they, if Notre Dame was running inside zone here, they would communicate and they would be blocking together to get to the second level. And then these two guys are going to block together to get to the second level. Okay. Now the running back's just going to hit the open hole and then they would end up either blocking here, depending on which linebacker presented himself. Okay. So if this guy crashed over here and this guy crashed over here, they would end up taking this linebacker, right? So it's about working on that first level up to the second level. They know that these two guys have to protect the, they, they are responsible for a gap players. Okay. So if this guy slants across the center's face, Aaron Banks knows, okay, that gap is now secure. I got to then work up to the second level or look for a second level defender. Okay. So that's why gaps can be important. There uh, is just communication of, Hey, here's where we're going to go. You normally Vince don't give running backs gaps to hit because they don't stay there. They move. Right. You give them, you give them tracks. Yeah. And, so and it, it's like, the that, out- so, so the track, um, it, what we would so say is, quick, okay. let's say we're going to run stretch to the, to the, to the boundary. Okay, Vince. So, okay. The, so, so we'll go yeah. that way. So we're going right. to, we're going to stretch here to the boundary. Okay. Yep. So, so you'd be aiming for either the outside cheek of the guard or the inside cheek of the tackle. Okay. So depending on, and depending on where, where you want that track to be. Right. So you're, but you're going off of a body part, frankly, um, of, of one of the linemen because the linemen are going to move. Right. Right. And so you, and you are stay still, on that. You stay on that out here. That's right. You're, so if you're running the inside cheek of the tight tackle, right. he goes out here, you're still pushing towards his inside cheek. You don't Correct. push towards his inside inside cheek where he lined up. Right, because now you're on, on the inside, inside cheek of the yeah. guard, probably because right. everybody's shifted over Correct. that direction. Yeah, Correct. so you, you stay on your track, and that you'll hear you'll hear running backs, coaches, and, and offensive coordinators talk about the running backs track all the time because mm-hmm. it is so so important uh, for them to stay on track because they can screw everything up. Right. They can screw absolutely everything up because okay, so let's say the his track is the inside cheek of the tackle, right, and and. Now, but he's going to follow where the grass is for that, right? So the problem is he's going to end up getting tackled by a backside player who has shifted over with the line and a guy that isn't a point of attack. So you're not necessarily worried about him from an offensive line standpoint. And the running back is is not following his track. Well, now he's going to get tackled by a guy that's not even supposed to be in the neighborhood of the play. Right. And that's on the running back. That's not on the offensive line. That that's mm-hmm. on the running back for not staying on his track. So that's why it's so mm-hmm. important. Right. And and it, so f- you teach them here's your track, and then what your what your read. Okay. Your read is essentially right. you're gonna so that so your read is gonna basically be the defend you're gonna be reading the tackles block. So here, based on how wide this guy is, you all, you understand there's a good chance that he's not we're not gonna reach him. So you're going to block that. This ends up becoming a drive block outside, and you're going to you're going to stretch it as far as you can until you and get that vertical <laughs> insertion. Cut it point, up, right? Yep. But if you lose track of that and you try to stretch outside, and this guy hasn't blocked, and then you just bounce it outside because you went too wide, you attacked his outside hip. Right. Now all of a sudden you're going to run right into the arms of the defender. Right. And so those are why those things are important. Now the other part is is looking at it from a line. So that's from a offense and defensive standpoint. The other piece of it is looking at it from a line numbering. Now I've never had anyone do anything other than A, B, C, and D gaps. This, you can actually get a little bit of a difference. So head up over the nose is a zero. Now here's, here's Vince where it can get interesting. So I have seen it this way where it's one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, right? Am I, Kind oh, of wow. on point there so far. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll call this a four I. Yeah. And they'll call this. Yeah. So four is, uh, let's see here, four is head up, five is outside. And they'll call this uh, a seven. I've seen that, which makes no sense to me. That makes zero sense. Or I've sense. seen it make a six I. A six I, I've heard. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Right. And so meaning inside now, right. I, I've seen it also where people make it kind of a little bit, make a little bit more sense. And it's just one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, right. Seven, seven, seven eight, nine. eight, nine. Yes. Right now I've seen other people that do this Vince is they'll go zero and a one there. So the one technique is actually the shade. Yeah. Then it's two, I two, right. three. Right. right. I've seen that one a lot. Then four I five. Right. And or no, excuse me, four I and then four, four, five. Right. right. So you'll see it differently. People do it differently. And you. so what I what we'll try to do is we'll just try to keep it as simple as possible. Right. We'll just go zero shade. One, two, three. Right. And then here's the interesting it. We, I've never seen anyone go like this. Me personally, I've never been on an offense like that. Yeah. Where I've always, and I don't know why, because also as part of it, what did you grow up on? Mm -hmm. I've always seen one, two, three that way. So you tell me which way you want to go, Vince. I've seen okay. this four I, mm -hmm. and then uh, four, and then five is what I've always seen. Yeah, that's what I've seen as well. So, uh, and then five technique. always ends up being a shade. Five isn't head up. And if you were right. going by the one, two, three, four, five, six, then five right. is head up. And I, it, five right. has always been a shade to me. Right. That's kind of how I learned it, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, is that Which way. makes no sense whatsoever. But right. it, it is it, what it, it does. does. That's, it doesn't. <laughs> but that's what I always, that's what, we, that's what the most of the teams I coached on yeah. are. Yeah. And it's the same thing backside. It's just, it's just, um, yeah, it's the same thing backside. Right. So, so this would be a. Some people call it a one. We'll yeah. call it a shade. Yeah, I've always called okay. it a one, but a shade is totally fine. Yep. Three. That guy's in a three. Mm -hmm. This guy is in a seven, and this guy is in a basically. We'd still call that a nine technique because of how wide he is. Because because he's so wide. That's right. right. He's right. not. He is not connected to any of the offensive linemen in right. any way. He's a nine. He's right. outside. Yeah. Now, what I've seen a lot of people do, do Vince, and I'm curious what you do, is they would call these linebackers 30s. Mm, so the zero stands for linebacker, but it's basically where's the linebacker line? So he's technically, they're both lined up on the outside sh sh shoulder of the guard, which is a three technique for the line, but because it's a linebacker, they call 30. it a 30. Interesting. Okay. I've never heard that before. Yep. And then that's how you – And so then if he's lined up inside here, it would be 10. Right. That's and then if he was head up, it'd be twenty. Mm -hmm. That's what I've Makes seen sense. a lot of people do as far as how That's do you easy. where was the linebacker? He was in a thirty. Yeah, you know, because how how else do you like how did you guys describe that? We did, we, it was it was more English than anything else. It was like he he was head up on me, coach. Okay. He, he was in my inside eye. He was my outside eye. What outside shoulder? Yeah. You know, it was just more English than anything else. Yeah. Okay. So this this was a way where we could kind of identify quickly. Sure. Hey, where's yeah, the, where the mic? The mic was in a ten. Yeah, he was in a zero. He, you know what I mean, right? Uh, and that allowed us to have kind of quick communication and and be able to kind of show yeah. people, hey, here's so. And the reason that's important is here's why this is important. Okay, it's important because especially in a zone scheme, you need way. to be able. Yes, you need to be able. Uh, you need to be able to discuss to who's who has who. Right. Okay. Wh where and so now an offensive line won't say, hey, coach, he was in, you know he was in a three technique. What they do is they have covered uncovered. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So if I'm running inside zone this way, okay, you say this guy's covered, right? He is uncovered. He is covered. He is these two guys. Technically, these guys are to me would are both in uncovered, but I would can, I'd call him covered and I'd call him uncovered because he's tight enough to where you almost want to count him as there. Sure. Right. So then that determines who's working with who. So if he's uncovered, you're gonna do. You're gonna do one of two things, okay? You're gonna. You can work here to here, mm -hmm. okay, and then you're gonna work here to here, and then you can work here to here. Yep. Okay. That's what I would do. And, and essentially, and the guy on the end is the read man. Well, I wouldn't even read that, Vince. He's so just wide. Leave him alone. Okay. Yeah, he's so yeah, wide. It's an inside we're gonna, zone. We're gonna bend yeah. this thing back inside. Okay. We're not bouncing this outside. Gotcha. Now, here's okay. the key, though. If you're a team that can see, some teams will bounce an inside zone. Some teams won't like w the way that I taught inside zone. We never bounce it from the gun. We may bounce it from an eye formation because it would be a different uh, yeah. kind of thing. That would I would actually run more mid zone that way. Gotcha. But an inside zone, in my opinion, it's never going to bounce unless they just crash. It's not designed to bounce. So 
this guy is going to stay out here because if this guy's crashing all day, there's so many things we can do to him. Sure. And that's not how Pitt played. Now, so that's what you can do, but you can all, but there, I, I kind of, I did that poorly. You don't down block there on an inside zone. You, you power step here and you power step there. So you're both kind of working to that level. If this guy crashes, then you can take him that way. But that would be kind of how you're going to work because you're not technically working to a specific linebacker. You're working to the linebacker that flashes. That's what you would do. And so that's kind of how I would do it. But basically, you're, you're going to work with covered, uncovered rules, essentially. So there's no A gap, B gap necessarily involved in that. You could discuss it. You could say, hey, look, this guy was in my B, A gap, B gap. But normally, you discuss it covered, uncovered. He was in a shade. He was in a three. He was in a yeah. whatever. And so, and, and just because we're talking about, you know, zone play, and and, and we're going to we're gonna do a 101 on zone play, but I, I feel like I, I need, I want to say this. So if we're talking about uh, the guard, I mean, the uh, the center, and uh and banks okay so those are the two guys they're working together on this defensive lineman and they're responsible most likely for 36 okay mm -hmm. now there's two different things 36 can do he can come straight down or he can kind of flow over the top to go to the opposite a gap if, you know depending on how he reads this play okay right and, and what he why, views his responsibility is and, and yes and this is why it is so important for communication on the offensive line okay because those two guys are going to be double teaming the defensive tackle the one technique OK, if he comes straight down, well, Banks is going to come off and he's going to take that linebacker. Right. And he's going to once once that double team is secure. Now he's going to come off and he's going to go get that linebacker. Well, if that linebacker scrapes over the top. Well, now Patterson is, is breaking off the double team and he's going to go get the linebacker. So that's why it's so important and not only to communicate. Banks has to stay on this block. Exactly. Right exactly. And so not only is it important for those guys to communicate how they're starting the play, but throughout the play, who's who's coming off? You, 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 me, 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 or you know, or stay, go, whatever they're whatever they're using, whatever terminology they're using, it is so important because it can change play to play if you're running the exact same play because it just depends on what the defense is doing, and so it's so important also that they have their eyes up while they're blocking because they can't lose sight of where that linebacker goes because. That guy is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wanted to point that out. Again, we're going to talk about that when we talk about zone reads and, and things of that nature. Um, but it, people talk about why communication is so important on the offensive line. And I just want to make sure that people understand this is one of the reasons why it is so important. Mm -hmm. and that's going to do it for today's Football 101. Uh, talk line numbering and, and gaps, obviously, and we'll we'll uh, we finally got this figured out. So we'll hopefully it continues <laughs> being good, and it's not one day it's good and the next day it stinks. Yeah, uh, know, so that's right? gonna be it for football one hundred and one.